will be late. Well, here we go. We'll see see if um, anybody wants to show up. Hit a uh, live video for Instagram. Mm -hmm. Checking connection. How oh, long does the Instagram video go? Your phone's not connected to it's the It's not. Network. I turned it off. How I, long? I have no idea. So we'll find out. We'll mm -hmm. see who's going to pop on here. Mm -hmm. Total Project is on. Hey, Total Project. He's here. Paul Peck is who's... talking to Rocco. Paul Peck. Oh, that's supposed to be on that side because then I'm looking away from the camera. You don't like it on I thought I'd change it this time. Mm -hmm. Then I'm looking away. Really? All right, mm -hmm. I'll move it back over here. So over there, that goes over there. Mm -hmm. John, could you close that door? Um, and we're getting ready to the live show. Um, people are popping on. Give people a chance to get on the show here. Um, on half screen and put it on that side so that it's not behind the camera. What do you want on half screen? The live chat over there. So it's on that side of the there yeah. we go live chats right there um we'll move our super chat over here got a lot of people mm -hmm. jumping on xc painter um i saw i think he was on my instagram so, uh let's send it randy ruff hey everybody hey randy grandpa pete mm -hmm. somebody new paul peck tumbleweed seen him uh many times so i don't know if we're running cool later. tumbleweed was that i don't know if tumbleweed's running late or we are why I don't know. we're not running late what's he oh uh, we're one minute now nah, we're just, I mean, 7 o'clock Mountain Time is when the show starts, and that's uh, USA Mountain Time. Mm -hmm. So, um, look, got a whole bunch of people. I see some names we haven't seen. Dan Yotis, Kevin Steverson from Indiana. Um, is McKenna gone? McKenna uh, is... Should be somewhere around here. She's around here, but she's not going to be in the office tonight because we have John Cole. Yes, What's going on? John the man. John's here tonight. You scoot over Lisa so people can see John. So John, uh, the expert and uh, the Idaho painter expert on HVLP sprayer sprayers, and uh, and he's going to be uh, with us tonight answering some questions, doing touch ups too. So he's part of the the team. He's uh, going to be answering questions on that side instead of McKenna tonight. Mm -hmm. So Paint John's, Tech Academy's here. Oh, Paint Tech Academy's in the house. Cool. Yeah. We've. Um, we're it's late there. Yeah, it's like <laughs> probably two, three o'clock in the morning. So oh. we've been t talking to Paint Tech about possibly going to London or going to England again for yeah, I'd love to. the painting and deck the National Painting and Decorating, decorating Show, show. Mm -hmm. which would be really, really cool. So we to, have a lot of details to work out, but yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, I'd be teaching some classes mm -hmm. possibly over there um, with them. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. Paint Tech says good evening, John. Yep, everybody's excited um, that John's here. Yeah, so, so we're in the middle of summer. What's going yeah, on? Um, How was your weekend? Yeah, so this weekend was a cool weekend. We're, we're getting ready for the show, but we'll just take a few more minutes, get people to um, pop on. But uh, this weekend was uh, McKenna's boyfriend's uh, birthday. And people might know him because he kind yeah. of works for you too. Yeah, Gabriel works for us. So if you want to know who Gabriel is, he uh, you see him on Instagram. He's one of our Instagram <laughs> stars. So if you don't watch me on the Instagram, you got to follow us on Instagram. Yeah. We're putting some pretty funny stuff out there, funny 30 second yeah. and one minute clips. So you got to check us out and you'll see what we're all about, what we do. Yeah. Um, we do put some videos on Instagram that you won't see on YouTube. So some really quick tips. So it was so Gabe, yeah, it was Gabriel's birthday, and which was uh, really cool. So Friday, we what went we went to what painters do. We play paintball. Paintball. Oh. Yeah, I got murdered. It was pretty bad. No, he some, he he didn't go out when he got shot because he only did kill shots, and so yeah, I his got, back is polka dotted right now. I got murdered. I got I got pretty pretty I destroyed. I get shot once, and I yeah. I run out because I don't. But it, I, it'll I kill. I did some murdering too, but um, I got murdered. So. Yeah. yeah, we got Gary Bruzzi. Um, I haven't seen him. We got Joe John, James Plano. He's in Andrew Slovacek. Seen. Um, got some new names in here. Yeah. Cool. Five eighteen painters. Oh, is here. Andrew wants to know what our golf handicap is. Do I even have one? Do they make numbers that big? Uh, yeah, at uh, least it doesn't have a <laughs> handicap. Um, I hate. Not. I really don't want to say what my handicap is. We're I, beginners. I, I really love golf. I golf. Um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a 26, so there you have it. <laughs> my handicap's a 26. But you're a beginner. It's getting better. I've got I my scores are getting better, so hopefully when I enter some new scores, it'll be a better better handicap. So yeah, yeah. 
So uh, tonight's topic is is um, we got look at our Instagram. We're live on Instagram, Instagram. tonight. Hi Instagram. And we got some people Yay. Um, on there. So <laughs> so you have to look upside um, down to see them. Yeah, you got to kind of look sideways to huh. see. Should I see I look some on people. My phone or is that bad? Um, is that I see bad? John Cole joined. He's watching oh, us on back here on Instagram. <laughs> It's kind of interesting. I didn't even know Instagram had a live um, option, so we're running live on YouTube and Instagram at the same time. Uh, Reagan Phillips. I don't know who he is. He says, who's the best? Who's Reagan face- Phillips? Yeah. Face- Are you shed- kidding God. Me? I am kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the best face facial guy you've had? That's a good question. Good question. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's this funny guy that has some pretty funny hair. He's got a lot of hair. A lot he, of hair. He's another Instagram crazy. star. So. Yeah, we got a couple of Instagram stars. Ooh. Reagan would be one of them. If you want I, to see Reagan. I owe Zach some money because he really was an Instagram star. Yeah. Re- 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 if you want to know who Reagan Phillips is... Um, He's that guy hanging off the the um, lift in his harness and yeah, not good. Uh, suffering. Yeah. In a not a good way. Yeah, not, not good. <laughs> so I, I just remembered. So, so yeah. if Zach's watching, I remembered you're the yeah. big, you're the internet or Instagram yeah. star. He's got some people from Very Chicago on. Uh, Mr. J. Rod. Gary Bruzy, been watching the videos. First time catching the live show. Yeah, thank, That's you, cool. Gary, thank you, for Gary, for being with us. Um, John, a lot of people popping in now. Really cool. Um, so what are we talking about tonight? Um, tonight's topic is doing interior and exterior touch-ups. So we got a lot of really cool tips and tricks that uh, we use when doing interior and exterior top shops. So hopefully it's going to help you. If you guys got any tips or tricks doing interior top shops, please chime in and let us uh, know because um, we definitely don't know it all. John and I got some uh, really cool things to share with you. John's um, brought some tools and stuff in here to show and he's going to go over some of the things um, that we do. Um, some things that um, I'm going to touch on some stuff and he's going to touch on mm-hmm. some some stuff. Let's see. Gabriel's dad asked you to sing happy birthday to ah. Uh. <laughs> what? I don't read that. that. It was just a text message from McKenna wants us to sing. Gabriel's dad wants us to sing happy birthday to Gabriel. Oh, yeah, this voice, happy this, this voice is meant happy for... Happy birthday to Gabriel. <laughs> His birthday's <laughs> happy passed. Happy birthday. It's we passed. already sang happy yeah, birthday to him, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> happy birthday, Gabriel, yeah. even though it's past. It was Friday. It's way past. Yeah, way past. so... Yeah. I'm okay, not a very good singer. We're a little off. So we have one person to thank for our topic tonight. Yeah. Who is that? So the topic tonight is um, we got an email uh, from somebody that said that they were a big fan of ours and... And he said, I'm a homeowner, wanted to know if you could send me a video of the best way to go about doing touch-ups. So here's the video. We're going to be talking about touch-ups tonight. This will be... um, But you'll probably do a demonstration, another video, but at least we wanted to talk about it tonight. We're going to talk about it tonight, and then we're going to do a video that's going to be uploaded on YouTube. So... Yeah. Yep, so we'll go um, begin with the exterior exterior touch-ups and start talking about... um, doing exterior touch-ups and stuff and um so i have a question like when you guys john when you painted a house today how do you go about doing touch-ups very carefully so i mean (laughs) is there like a something you do every time to after a house is completed um you know we try to have multiple guys looking at at the the house so you got multiple sets of eyes and checking for different places it seems like most of the touch-ups end up in in a lot of the same places over and over again and so you start with those places and once that's been eliminated you back up and start looking at the other spots yep so it's good to have multiple people definitely multiple people multiple eyes everybody's going to see the uh, the house in a different perspective and see different things and stuff so it's definitely good good um tip to have multiple people looking for touch-ups but i'll start with um the exterior and you're going to be watching the live feed and asking me any questions so and then john's going to be switching positions here with lisa um here shortly and lisa's going to be taking Behind his position so small room <laughs> so I, I i just want to start off to um by starting you know t- typically on the exterior we uh spray the body of the house and then all the trim is brushed and rolled and that, that's pretty typical and when you spray i don't know how many people know or understand when you spray um paint through an airless sprayer the airless sprayer it runs it through um you know your airless spray tip We've got one right here from titan one of these high efficiencies 
tips. It the the spray tip atomizes the paint and it turns it into little little tiny droplets and sprays it out, and that's what gives you a really fine finish. And that atomization process, it um, actually. Uh, to me, I don't have any scientific evidence to back it, but um, it changes the color of the paint. It changes the appearance of the paint really, really slightly. So if you if you spray paint, uh, spray the exterior of the house with, uh, say, an ultra deep color, and then you go back and you try to do touch-ups with a brush or a nap, you're gonna see, it's, we it's really weird. You'll see a difference in the paint. And there's multiple reasons why you'll see it, but one of them is because of the atomization of the paint through an airless spray tip. So if you're spraying the paint on, you have to take that into consideration. If you're going back to touch it up, especially ultra deep colors, you're never gonna get a, a touch up um, or um, you're never gonna get it to look perfect. And, and so there's some tips and tricks that you can use to help minimize that and and touch-ups when it comes to light colors versus ultra deep colors dark colors on houses so deep bases and ultra deep bases those colors you got to be a lot more careful when it comes to your spraying and how you go about spraying so you minimize your touch-ups because if you have touch-ups on really dark colors for instance i'll just use this hype of like a black it's almost impossible to touch up a black but if you got a really light color like a white um if you go back and brush it you're not going to see any difference at all because they're the more tint that's in the paint the darker the color the more the tip changes the color of the paint so um so when it comes to that now that i've kind of explained that a little bit we deal with around here the houses have siding on them like this this warehouse or like composite siding and it's not real wood and it gets all these blisters and stuff like that and it's really good to do all your um, priming, of course, before you paint, but then your back brushing. There's a lot of blisters and there's a lot of things that would need to be back rolled or back brushed while spraying, but we would rather do it before you spray. So you take the same color, back brush anything that needs to be back brushed or back rolled, and then you spray over it. So you don't have to back roll or back brush your, your, the spraying that you did because it's um, you're gonna see that difference. And it's interesting because if you spray the paint on the, the entire exterior and you back roll a certain portion of the house, you're gonna see where you back roll it too because um, it's gonna lay out the, the tint and the paint in a different, different direction and it gives it a different look than when you spray it. So do all your back rolling, back brushing first, very critical with ultra deeps and deep base colors. Not nearly as critical with um, whites. So is it Peter? Yeah, Peter. Janica, Janica, Janica. Janica. I'm probably, hopefully I'm not butchering his name. Yeah. I mean, you got a super chat from him. want to know where he's from. Thank you very much. Let us know where yeah. you're from. He spells his name, um, what country you're from, because it's definitely different than how we yeah. spell it here in the United States. So yeah. thank you very much. Family man's in the house. We see him all yeah, the time. Yeah, thank you for yeah, being cool. with us. Thank got you a, for being with us. Actually, the we only... are going to do a college visit in Washington Thursday and Friday. So... Maybe yeah. try to hook up with them. Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah, I don't know where you're cool. located. Um, have to get, send us an email. Yeah. And the only way to touch up is to start over. Do it right or mm -hmm. do it twice. <laughs> don't spit, drink, or chew, or go with girls who do. You just gave us a little vice. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I've never <laughs> so, heard that one. So for people that are just joining us right now, we're talking about touch-ups. And you've started with exterior touch-ups. Yes. And you talked about the ultra base colors are harder to touch up than the light colors. And... You back brush things before spraying them. Are we doing any giveaways tonight? Oh, we got um, a giveaway tonight. We're going to be giving away a, um, this is a stud finder. And what else? It finds other stuff, John, doesn't it? What is it? It finds other things. Yeah, yeah. It finds, um, it's supposed to find um, Electri electrical wires and steel studs wow. and things like that. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. They're, they're brand new. Uh, we got them. We just started, we haven't, we started messing around with them. John just started messing around with it um, recently. I got sent seven of them. I'm going to start giving away a handful and we're going to be testing them. So here the thing is, and it's from AOM. I don't, hopefully you can see that. A AOM. It's new to us, but it comes in this pretty nice yeah, case. Uh, very pretty nice impressive. Case. Here's instructions. Very nice. So I'm definitely very impressed with the case it comes in. I can't, uh, you know speak to the quality how the device works and everything yet because we've just began messing with it it's the multi multi-function 
tester um, TS002. So we're going to give that away tonight. Kind of cool. It's even got a magnet in the case. We're going to give away that. We're going to be giving away a um, Sherwin Williams gift card, $50 gift card wow. tonight. So um, thanks to cool. Sherwin Williams for providing that. Thanks for AOM for providing the stud finder. And then we're giving away two Titan um, to one person. One person. Two, Two Titan high efficiency airless tips. These are their brand new tips. These things can be run. It's kind of interesting. They can be run down to a thousand psi, so which would eliminate a lot of your overspray and dust in the air. So kind of cool. We'll be giving away those tonight. Mm -hmm. So um, cool. We'll be doing that pretty soon. But can you give a couple more tips for exterior touch-ups? Yeah. So what we were talking about, um, you know, the how the airless tips. Um, you know, you're, when you look at that, you smile. And I you know. Must be saying something funny. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about the stud finder, and yeah. So uh, there's Armando Perez here, and um, we have. I guess his a stud baby. finder could be like a finder that finds good-looking guys. Yeah. Yeah. A stud finder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a stud finder. <laughs> really. <laughs> Um, oh, so, <laughs> um, here, so now we, we talked about a little bit about, um, ultra deeps, ultra deep base, the darker, the color, the more difficult and, uh, the more complications you're going to run into in touching up paint. So, um, the atomization of paints, you know, applies to interior and exterior. We're talking about exterior paints. we got a bunch of people on the, the, um, oh, Instagram so I should look at my Instagram cool. to you see. Probably should, but yeah. I think John's looking at it. Are you looking at it, John? Yeah, trying to. So, okay. What yeah. the you, you, a lot you, going on. You got to, okay. we got to do this. Yeah. We got a whole know. lot going on now. Yeah. We're going to be trying it's to, kind of um, funny. let me get back to the <laughs> topic here. So there's, when it comes to doing touch-ups to using high quality paints is a part of the process of having, I'm um, little touch-ups. Um, what? Ronald Jones got his 440. Oh, did he get his 440? He got his 440. Thank you, Titan. That is so awesome. We're glad. Hi, folks. We need a picture. So, uh, yeah, Ron, please send us a picture so we can post it on Instagram yeah. so Titan can post it. That'd be really, really yeah, cool. Very cool. We'd really appreciate it. Sorry and for then, interrupting. Yeah, and then um, just leave us a review of what you think yeah. of the thing, too. But I mean, I'd love to see a picture on Facebook. I'd love for you to email me a couple cool pictures yeah. um, with you with it. So thank you. Yeah. Ron, we just gave away a Titan airless sprayer when we hit 100,000 subscribers. Yeah. Back to the subject. So um, I'm sorry. High, qual high quality paints. This is this is one of the difference. Why why spend the money on a gallon of paint that's forty dollars versus a gallon of paint that's fifteen dollars? Because you can literally buy exterior paints that are fifteen dollars that are really cheap. And one of the differences is the um, the tint quality and the um, and now I just forget the the terms. I've slipped my head, but um, the tint control. So what happens is you you can have with really cheap paints and different laws just even with the within the exact same paint you could have differences in the color mm -hmm. and for instance I'm sure Williams used to have a product um, it was um, oh gosh it was a, a ceiling paint that we used to use a flat paint and they specifically told you to only use it in white because if you tried to tint it it didn't have very good tint control I mean literally from gallon to gallon it could be a different mm -hmm. color and it was and so cheaper paints and it's not I mean nothing bad about sure Williams that was a, a, a you know low-end paint for um, like um, doing rentals and stuff like that and it's really only for ceilings but we used to tint it and so high quality paints have really good high quality tint control and and there's less of a difference from gallon to gallon to almost no difference when you're using really really high-end paint so you know that's one of the reasons we use um, on our exteriors we use a lifetime warranty coating and with very good tint control and there's v almost no difference but I've seen paints uh, mid-range paints that l literally if you go know, from gallon to gallon there's a, a difference in slight difference in color if you, if you take one gallon roll it on the wall go back another gallon and try to touch up over it there's a big difference which brings up you know another um, tip and that's boxing your paints mm -hmm. this is this is absolutely essential if you're dealing with uh, ultra deep colors any type of dark colors inside and outside you have to box your paints What's if boxing you in for the people that don't know oh that's a very good question Bo so boxing your paints if I got, if I'm, I always say Mary, and you tell me that's wrong. Oh, it absolutely drives me insane when she tells <laughs> I say me that. Marry the paints. She's like, I get. You need to marry the paints, and um, I don't know where that came from, but it's it does drive me crazy. It's um, okay. 
So bo boxing your paints, if you have three gallons, to do a bedroom, uh, there's no bedroom you're ever gonna complete the bedroom with one gallon. We typically buy for a bedroom this size right here for the walls, we're gonna buy two gallons. For the ceiling, we're gonna buy a gallon. So those two gallons, if you um, start just dump one gallon into the pan, start rolling the walls, and then you run out and then dump the other gallon into the pan and continue rolling, then you take that, that second gallon and try to do touch-ups, there could be a difference in color and um there could and and some of those differences may not be the quality of the paint but it may be the tenter and and here's something um i didn't even write in my notes but it just popped in my head mm -hmm. i i can't even tell you how many times i go into the paint store and order a five gallon bucket of paint and they have the little hole that they pop off and the, the tent shoots into that hole mm -hmm. how many times i see tent around the hole that actually not hit good that rim and didn't make it inside so what does that tell you i mean it really irritates me because th there's no way that that five it's impossible that that five would be the same color as mm -hmm. the other five that all the tint made it into the hole so um so why did I, what was i even saying that <laughs> because of because of doing touch-ups so oh, then you go buy another right. five so, gallon it's uh, not gonna right so doing touch-ups so that's the part of you know boxing your paint so now if for instance you have those two fives and you're doing a whole interior and you got two fives you need to box those two fives together because there can be a difference between mm -hmm. the one five versus the other five yeah. when it comes to singles i mean you don't have they're not going to miss it because the can's this big and the tent's going to go right in and not miss it but it's this is an, an interesting thing that we see all the time is they'll take the can shake them up and then when you open the can you'll see tint like around the lid mm -hmm. and kind of around the rim like it doesn't all the tint does not get shaken up and I try to sometimes remind Sherwin Williams and sometimes they're um, good about doing it is mm -hmm. double shaking um, like ultra deep colors and stuff like that because that tint that tint around the red rim or on the makes lid a huge difference. yeah it can make a difference in your paint so yeah. I mean you have this is very essential and um, I know sometimes, you know, even we get lazy sometimes, John and I, as long as we've been painting, that we don't box our paints. And there's uh, times if you get lazy and you don't do it, you, you can get in trouble. But yeah. sometimes you get lazy and um, it's like the really light colors. You really can get away with doing it with light colors. But when it comes to ultra deep colors and deep colors, that's just, it's an, if you want to be, uh, a really good painter do really high quality work you're working in multi-million dollar homes and stuff like that that that's um it's essential to do that so mm -hmm. um, so i'm not seeing our feed move so i don't know if we're not having a feed at all or what um, is going there it goes oh i don't know um it just wasn't moving, moving. We rinse the tin slightly and then whisk it all up paint tech academy mm -hmm. gave a tip there we rinse um that's interesting. Um, interesting tip. So the cool. Thanks. They, well, um, so the Paint Tech Academy is on here and they um, teach people how to do painting mm -hmm. and stuff over in the UK, which is really cool. They're on here. They're giving some tips. Uh, what a tin is to them is, I, I believe a that's the, oh, the, painting get, bucket. The, gallon of, the gallon of paint. Mm -hmm. So that's the tin. We call it the paint can. They mm -hmm. call it the paint tin. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of cool. Um, Rick some wants to know, do you terminal. strain your paint? Um, so straining your paint is, um, I, I wouldn't say that that has um, any effect on doing touch-ups. Straining your paint is uh, very essential if you're getting a lot of clogs and stuff like that and spits and spraying and stuff. And um, I would say this is, this is interesting because... Um, and John can um, speak to this too. It's we we haven't sprayed our our, our um, strained our paints since I started painting. You know, I don't know, like 15 years ago. Mm. Never, never strained our paints. But in the last six months, the paints that we this is it's been an absolute disaster. The paint that we're getting is full of paint film and it's it's a mess it's like mm -hmm. it's clogging our guns it's clogging our, our mm -hmm. sprayer filters and everything and we've had to resort to straining your paint mm -hmm. and um and it's just a mess because you got to strain it get your and i i mean jumble john john's one that has to do it mm -hmm. you know all the time and you just get paint all over your hands and it's just a dirty thing but the the paint that we used to get on the same paint that we've bought over the years, it was always extremely clean. And I don't know what has changed here recently, mm -hmm. why the paint is coming out with this, all this, this goopy, um, like slimy paint stuff in there. It's just, mm -hmm. oh my Not gosh, good. it's a, it's a mess. So, um, very annoying. We have a, um, a winner. 
So we so got a um, giveaway. Cool. We got a, a giveaway. We're going to give away. Um, uh, I'll give away two Titan tips. We'll give away two these two Titan, tips. Titan spray tips right here. These are $35 tips right here um, from Titan, the TR1 HEA tips. Thank you, Titan, for providing these tips. High efficiency high efficiency tips so um mike collins from has been just absolutely wonderful working yeah. with titan he provided those so Mike or matt is that a matt yeah that's a matt i don't mm -hmm. have good writing matt should have been a doctor <laughs> matt olson thank you very much for being on the show you're the Wasn't winner enough, of the two though. titan tips so um send us your email at, or your address your shipping address to um a live show at the dash idaho dash painter.com on the feed, I saw that somebody asked if you um, do touch-ups with spraying on a deck with a sprayer. And then I remember you were talking to me, like, do you ever spray touch-ups? So, um, so that's a good idea. So we'll talk, let me, we'll talk about touching up with a sprayer and do I do touch-ups with a sprayer. That's very bad practice. And I've tried it over the years and I've never had good results. And if you sprayed the wall... I mean, why wouldn't you go back and spray your touch up? And this is what happens is you'll get this where you spray it, like it, you'll spray it, it leaves this kind of what we call a dry edge or dry feathered edge. And um, that little edge around where you sprayed it looks worse than the touch up itself. And so um, e even though the, in the center of it, the colors are gonna be probably the same because the atomization, that, that dried edge, and it's kind of a dry edge that is like you know a half inch around it and there's there's no way you can get around it so um, I've tried over the years and um, we've given up on touching up and so that's the same with the deck doing touch-ups with a deck when we do our decks we always um, we spray in the cracks of the deck mm -hmm. but we always brush and roll our deck so if there's touch-ups we brush and roll it again John can you put the um, email address for um, Matt to send us his address so we could mail him mm -hmm. so we could send him those tips and somebody asked if I painted. Do you paint? <laughs> I walk in a room where there's paint and it ends up all over me. So I look like I paint. You've but painted before. I have. And you know what? I watch your videos and I learn and I really respect what you guys do. Like your patience. And I'm getting patient, more patient as I get older. But um, it takes a lot of patience and there's a lot of work. And I highly respect what my husband does, but um, I don't think I'm quite there in my patience yet. <laughs> <laughs> Big Daddy Ra Ra, it's his birthday, yay! Okay, John, turn around, you have a better voice than us. We'll sing happy birthday. To who? To Big Daddy Ra Ra. Happy, happy birthday. birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, dear Big, Big Daddy, Daddy Ra Ra. Ra. Happy Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you for being with us. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a horrible singer. Um, I can't paint and I can't sing. Yeah, so um, so that getting back to the, the question was doing spraying, spraying your touch-ups. Now, touch -ups. And so I want to touch one of my notes was, is always do your touch-ups with how you applied your paint. Mm -hmm. And... But th there is, I guess, an asterisk. If you sprayed it, that's not going to work. But if you brush, for instance, if you brushed a door jam, brush the trim on, you're going to want to go back and do your touch-ups with a brush and not a roller because the roller is going to stipple that section and not leave a brush stroke, and you're going to see exactly where you touched it up. So if I, if, for instance, if I rolled an interior wall, if I rolled it with a 9-inch uh, roller and a 3-8-inch nap, I'm going to want to go back and use a roller, um, but uh, John's got some techniques I'm going to have him share um, when it comes to uh, doing that, so I'll let him expand on it. But I'm going to use a roller, but we use a different type of roller, and we roll the wall because um, where that touch-up is, you don't want to take and touch it up necessarily. It's not ideal to touch it up with a brush. We we do sometimes and we'll explain some of that how we go about it but it's it's really good practice to try uh, the best to um, do your touch up with the same way it was the paint was applied and so how do you know how it was applied it, you can look at a door jam if there's what we call roping all over the door jam um, and roping is brush strokes then you can assume that was it was applied with a brush if it's kind of got all this little stippling you can assume that the door or the door jam was rolled if it just looks like pure glass no roping no stippling you can probably assume it was sprayed so how many of your guys know what roping is uh, that was interesting. <laughs> 
um we did i got some we'll be sticking some um oh my gosh some video clips um, my daughter came out interviewed some of my guys reagan if he's still on the show and um tonight but she asked him what roping was and asked him was what was fun. the other thing it asked him roping and and unfortunately they didn't know <laughs> yeah so we got some training to do i did train them oh i oh. taught them oh sorry after that but i, I think it's time for me to switch seats with john all right because he is so much more knowledgeable than really me. <laughs> yeah about what <laughs> pretty much everything everything <laughs> pretty much well, let's not get too carried away. yeah right. let's not get too carried away. so i'm gonna go in back and we'll have answer him some questions step in. so thank you for being with us everybody Let's see, I know. Let's see, Jeremy Mack. I notice you use tons of tape. Doesn't that process slow down production? So that's an interesting question, Jeremy. Is that in? When it comes to masking, once you've been around um, a hand masker, a three man hand masker, and masked, I would say, I mean, within six months, our guys are masking very fast. Um, don't yeah. you think? Yeah, you know, it's like anything with painting. You get better at it the more you do it. And the reason why you see us mask and see us use so much tape is it's so much faster. It's so much more efficiency. It's so much more efficient and it makes you money. Yeah. You know, someone on Instagram was asking on your um, garage door video, they said, oh, I could, I could roll and cut that in in 15 minutes and, and say, there's no way you could mask that and spray that in that amount of time. A single car uh, garage door only take us, what? two minutes to mask and two minutes to spray. So definitely way faster once yeah. you have to hang a mask. In. Yeah, I mean, we, we could, so I mean, the, the the guy brought up, and I'm sure he's a great painter and his you know way works for him. But I think uh, that single car garage door, I did an Instagram video just showing you how I spray one, whether I go side to side or up and down. We could take a, a Titan 440 sprayer, load that thing up, get it loaded up, um, mask it, shoot it, clean up that sprayer within 15 minutes if we wanted, if that's all we were doing Absolutely. easily. And then to us, the quality of the finish is gonna be better because it's a sprayed finish. And so I, I just think, I mean, to the garage door is not, it's not gonna have stippling. We're not gonna have to worry about, you know, it coagulating drying um and all that and so Absolutely. to me it's, and then we can spray on it's super heavy and we're not gonna have to go back yeah. and do multiple we can coats get that mill thickness to where it needs to be to to get that um standard that the whatever uh manufacturer is asking for and there's there's almost no way you can do that cutting and yeah rolling. yeah it's uh, masking hand maskers and maskings is the way to go i mean you get you got a um in production painting especially new construction painting but we're repainting doing repaints and i mean believe me if, if it wasn't if cost yeah. effective if it didn't make us money we wouldn't be doing it for Absolutely. sure yeah um so uh i'm gonna ask john i know john when you do touch-ups you use um a couple methods I, i've talked a lot of my live show i don't ever water down my paints and i don't ever water down my paints when we're painting mm -hmm. stuff but now when it comes to doing touch-ups um, there are certain situations where we do water down our paint for touch-ups and sometimes water, sometimes latex extender and um, using a, a weaning nap. So why don't you talk a little bit about um, our process uh, of doing touch-ups with that? Because you're, I know you're amazing doing touch-ups on interiors. And so just go ahead and talk about that. Yeah, you know, um, we... You know, it's true. We never water down any paint. What we do use is extender. So, um, you know, this is the M1 brand of, of latex paint extender, and I believe all that's in it is just basically propylene glycol. And so um, that's going to maintain the integrity of the, the acrylic paints that we're using way better than water is. And so any time that we're cutting um, any sort of latex or uh, acrylic product like that, we're using extender. Um, and really doing touch-ups, it's, it's just an art. Um, you know, I remember when I first started working for Chris, we were working on a remodel for um, some designer, and he showed me how to go through and do touch-ups, and, and one of the biggest things that I, I took away from that first day was thinking about where is the light coming in in the room. Because where the light's coming in makes all the difference for how your touch-ups show up. And, and if you change the direction that you're bringing your bristles across that wall um, from one direction, that touch-up will show up um, much less than another. So a lot of it is even just thinking about where's the touch-up at, where do people walk in the room, 
what are they going to notice? Where's the light going to be? And then kind of figuring out some of those variables. Yeah. And and this is a point I want to um, talk about too on, on the touch-ups is when it comes to touch up, I think one of the big mistakes that people make doing touch-ups and when we teach somebody the biggest mistake we see the beginners do is for instance, if you have just a, a little nick on the wall, just a small little nick where somebody nicked it, they'll, they'll just run by with say a roller because the wall was rolled and they're doing touch-ups with a roller because they're taught, well, that's what it was rolled. So roll it. And then they'll just roll that little nick and the nick was only this small and now they've rolled a touch-up like this big on there and and they're putting a ton of paint on that spot and what we have now is a, a buildup of the paint and it's really shiny and the touch-up is in a hallway John talked about lighting that touch-up in a hallway is gonna show really really bad so when we have a nick like that what do we do you know typically we'll use um, just the smallest brush we can so we always carry artist brushes like this in our vans and um, you know if we can get away with it you'll you'll just daub a little bit of the paint out and you'll just touch up the very smallest spot that you can um, it, you know one of the ways when I'm teaching our new guys uh, how to do some of this stuff that we think about is you think about it casting a different kind of shadow. So every time you do a touch up, you cast, you create a different mountain on that wall that casts a different kind of shadow and that's that flashing that you're seeing. You're refracting light differently off of that wall. So you wanna create as little disturbance in that original coating as possible. Yep, good tip. Um, good tip. I know, um, and there's times when we will be rolling um, touch ups and the walls were rolled and um, we got some a video playing in the background. It won't go mute. <laughs> what are you watching? The case. She's <laughs> bored of us. She's watching something else. <laughs> um, let me see here. I wanted to check something. Um, so uh, we use um, and it's inter interesting. I know people have talked about the whiz rollers before. Have you ever heard of a whiz roller? Use yeah, the, it's the foam rollers, isn't it? Yeah, we we call um, we call our roller they're weenie naps and. And if we if we ever um, there we go. This one doesn't have the uh, the foam roller on it. This just has a microfiber. The microfiber, and that's like a quarter inch microfiber. And when we're rolling walls, we like to use uh, foam rollers or microfiber rollers. If we have got like large touch ups, areas, if for some reason there was a scratched area or something like that, mm -hmm. we're gonna use like a roller like this. These little microfiber rollers or a foam roller, because one of, one of the reasons is it doesn't put on a whole lot of paint. It's gonna put on just an, a really fine thin film of paint, and then we're not gonna use the paint straight. We're gonna water that paint down a little bit, um, and we use either latex extender or a lot of times just water and there's um, another one of the reasons we do that I'll talk about here in a minute but um, this is just gonna leave a little bit thinner film of paint than just a regular if the, the roller or the wall was rolled with a 3 8 inch nap that's what we typically roll all the walls around here with is 3 8 inch naps it's just gonna put too much too thick of a coat of paint on there too much build and then you're just gonna see that shiny spot but um, we also roll down or water down the paint a little bit with water to knock down the sheen a little bit is um i know you do that don't you yeah yeah occasionally we'll use some water um the extender doesn't quite knock the sheen down it helps it level out but it, it still keeps that sheen so sometimes if we're touching up somewhere where it's an older home the drywall's kind of pulled some of the acrylic out of the paint and the paint's kind of lost some of its sheen we'll use some water to help touch up some of the, yeah. the spots if we're doing some random touch-ups through a house yeah because what one of the what, one of the things is for instance and i like to use this as an example in a hallway you're doing touch-ups going down the hallway and there's some nicks and deems and you touch it up you know when you're applying even though it's the exact same sheen when you're applying multiple coats of that sheen you're just building up more acrylic you know in that area and you're building up just more sheen it's just going to naturally look shinier and if the if the room was or the hallway was painted you know a year ago or two years ago you're just going to get some sheen loss and stuff and then the more coats of paint you put on the wall um, like if the, the wall has only been painted once some of that acrylic and stuff out of the paint the sheen's going to be absorbed into the wall and the more coats of paint the less that happens so if it's fa a fairly new house the touch-ups are going to be a little bit more a little bit more difficult so you definitely need to water that paint down so it doesn't have um as much sheen to it and it knocks it down a little bit um so they uh, what do you got some other you got some other tools back there um 
But see, I'm going to um, talk about this too a, a little bit. When um, when you're doing touch-ups, and this is, this is another thing, this is extremely critical. If the paint has been, um, especially with you know, deck stains, solid color stains, but even, even with interior and exterior paints, even high quality paints, if the paint's been sitting more than a couple days, you have to shake that paint up. It's absolutely critical to shake it up extremely well. Shake it and then stir it. Cause you, you're, you can shake it, you know, what you think for a minute or so, open it up and you're gonna still see some like tint on the top of it. When you dip your brush in into that paint and you're gonna be taking some of that tint out with it and um, that color is going to look different. So it's very, very critical. And I know John is really good about this, is shaking up the paint. If the paint's been sitting for a year, um, even shaking it up is is not is good oh, enough. Oh, come in. We got a guest. We got a guest. Yeah, come on. Here's our, we got here's a guest. Our, our Instagram star. Here's one of the Instagram stars. We got Reagan in the house. So you can keep your glasses on. Keep glasses on. Cool guy. So this happens to be Reagan. Um, I think you were just on Instagram. Yeah, um, I was saying stuff to you guys. He was. Um, well, no, you're on. <laughs> talking you were on. I was, talking crap, right? you're, I was you're, on both. You're the famous guy that's hanging off the, yeah. the aerial lift. Might not have kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's really, really cool. Reagan is off to your back, heading to school. Yeah, I'm going back to Chico this next Monday. Yeah, we're kind of bummed. Yeah. He's one of our star employees, and we are hoping to have him back next year. And if you, John's if you need work, possibly. I'm sure there's painters in Chico yeah. Yeah. that would love you. Yeah, this guy's an awesome painter. Um, you can see him on, a, he, he held um, the record on Instagram for, for quite a while. while for the most views. Oh, to for, um, yeah, over 26,000 views or something like yeah. that. So. But I came right. back. He came so, back. Yeah. And the notes came back. <laughs> Yeah. Right, yeah so cool. Thank you very much, right, I'll See you guys later. I don't leave till the end of this next week. So see ya. Guys call. Thanks right. a lot. Have a great right. evening. If you are bored and want to work, let me know. I can schedule you. <laughs> <All right. laughs> really cool. Greg and stop by. That's awesome. So cool. So we're back to do shaking up the paint. It's it's absolutely inc uh, critical. What you happen to is if the paint has been sitting like more than a year, even a, a touch up kit, you get a lot of settling of um, the fillers in the paint, like the clay and stuff like that. And you got to get down to the bottom and with a stir stick and grab that stuff, stir it up, and bring it to the top. And and it's uh, we have you know if uh, the paint has been sitting in our storage for a while, we got a huge storage. Where we store the paint and we're doing touch-ups on people's places you know maybe even a year later i i have my own shakers and i i stick them in my own shakers and shake them up so i don't have to go to the paint store because that's really good practice is just to take them to the paint store but um Chris, so, somebody keeps asking, does the hundred dollar paintbrush make a difference in touch ups? Do you know? Have you used it for touch ups or so not that far? That that would be um so somebody's referring to the Lucas Pro Tools paintbrush. Um and that 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 paintbrush is is an awesome paintbrush. But here's one thing about the paintbrush uh, that I, I would never use it for touch-ups and um, and because the bristles are really stiff and because they're really stiff it's going to have a tendency to doing touch-ups possibly um, be leave like little roping marks and stuff. I like to use um, really small brushes to do touch-ups and these are two of them right here. These are pretty old. I, I would never uh, do a touch up with this type of brush. This one's all worn out and stuff, but this is probably the most common brush I use for doing touch ups. I like a little, like one inch, you know, one in an inch and a half angled sash brush, but I like a nylon bristle brush. And Purdy makes this brush right here in nylon, and nylon is really, really soft. And that's what I like to do my touch ups with is a brush like this. This is, mm -hmm. um, we, we keep lots of these. I know, um, uh, what do you think about the Pro Tools and what brushes? do you use doing touch-ups probably a little bit the same i do because i'm the one that buys this stuff and puts it in yeah, his van but. you know i um i agree with you i don't know if i'd use the that pro tool brush for a touch-up because of how stiff the bristle is um i, I did see a comment about i can't imagine using a hundred dollar brush um you know it's a great brush and we spend that much on festool but we we won't spend that much on a paint brush that would do just as good of a job as a festool would do yeah. with something else so you know it's it's it, it makes a difference and it, it definitely is a great great brush great product 
Um, a soft bristle is great. If you can have a soft bristle, um, especially on interior touch-ups, it's gonna give a little bit more. It's gonna allow um, that thinner paint to kind of move around if you've thinned it down. Um, we use these if we've got some tight spaces on some exteriors or tiny little touch-ups on a door jam or something like that because the exterior paint we're using is a lot thicker than the interior paint typically is. Yeah, yeah. The the hundred. Um. It, yeah. He, John touched on something with that, the hundred dollar paintbrush. It's kind of interesting because, um. In here, here's an example. Guys will go. Um. You have your an option of buying a Ryobi chop saw, um. For two seventy nine or a twelve hundred dollar Festool, you know, chop saw in Festool. Uh, makes amazing tools and people will go spend 1200 for a chop saw and fest tools yet a painter is not going to invest a hundred dollars into a paintbrush um, that could last him you know a lifetime if he takes care of it properly yeah, absolutely I mean, yeah. yeah it's um the quality of the finish with that brush is absolutely amazing the, the bristles on the brush is amazing it's a great brush um anyways it does you know, but I, um, we, we just, we have different brushes we use for touch-ups there's different things that we use brushes for and stuff so mm -hmm. Um, so here's another uh, tip too I wanted to talk about is doing touch-ups out of the original can of paint. So if you got a gallon of paint, and this is sometimes we can be a little bit lazy and we're all done with the, the, the room and you got a gallon of paint, it's got this much uh, paint in the bottom and you just grab that, that gallon and start doing touch-ups with that gallon. Here's the problem with, with that scenario and why it's really bad to do touch-ups if you got a critical situation where it's ultra deep colors or um, it's a, you know just an expensive house three million dollar home and it's got to be absolutely perfect around the rim of the can it's kind of this weird thing no matter how many times they shake it up you'll see like um, just this white film of the, the paint like the paint itself that never gets completely mixed into the paint you'll see that sometimes or you'll see like tent on the side of it and what happens we will dip in our brush pat it on the side and then you're going to carry some of that tint that's on the side or some of the white paint that um that never got tint mixed into it, that white film and that's going to um discolor your touch up it's not going to look the same so really really bad practice to you know um paint out of the can you should take and you know pour you know what's left into what we use cut in buckets like a um, two gallon cut in bucket and um or this is or touch up cuts yeah, this is, um, you can talk about that. We use, that's what we use for doing touch-ups. Yeah, and so we always carry just a bunch, uh, a bunch of these touch-up cups. And so when we leave, we always leave uh, a quart of the paint with the, the customer. But um, this is also good to pour out of that, uh, that one gallon can or the five. And you can pour it into here and work out of here if you're doing the very final touch-ups. And then you don't have to get another bucket out and then it's dirty and then it's got to dry because this stays with the paint the whole time. Yep. Um, yeah, those are those are um, interesting cups. They're pretty cool cups, but they, sure, um, sure. Williams used to provide us stackable cups. These are um, wider mouth cups, which are pretty nice and stuff like that. But um, it, it's you know part of uh, doing touch-ups is once you paint the place, you're going to leave as a professional painter. Then the customer, um, we, we offer I think a five-year warranty where we'll come back and do touch-ups for five years that's our standard warranty but the customer could try to do touch-ups themselves and you definitely want to you know give them the best opportunity uh, to be successful themselves so you want to provide them you know the proper container with paint and the proper paint in there to do touch-ups with stuff so um, our paint store provides these to us for free they provide a box this little house that we put them in and stuff so um, uh, so that's that. Um, on to I think we Do should we have probably any giveaways? yeah we giveaway giveaway let's, give away. We let's like give away. so we were just talking about sure sure whims providing us these touch up gifts for free which is a really nice service very thankful to sure whims very thankful to sure whims that they provided these fifty dollar gift cards um, so that's kind of cool so somebody had um, a great idea what's the great idea they said if you can't sing good you sing really bad and loud to make people feel embarrassed or something like that. And I think that's what I do. So. Oh, good. That's good. <laughs> I just put a smile on people's face. So our winner of the, what are they winning again? What was that? Gift card. Gift card. Gift card. Um, so Jesse the gift card. Gibson. 
Jesse, Jesse. Gibson. Oh, I just see him right there. Mine is an XL. Love it. Um, Jesse Gibson. Jesse Gibson, you're um, the winner of the fifty dollars Sherwin Williams gift card. Um, if you're if you win any of that stuff, last week we had some winners. We had one of them that won the the Titan Magnum um, HVLP gun, and you have to email us when we announce you as a winner with your address so we can email you or so we can mail you your prize and that is live show at the dash idaho dash painter.com so um you got to email us um we still got to, to give away the um the stud the multi the multi-function detector right here kind of cool we're gonna be giving away that um here a little bit later on here it is right there we are provided seven of them so i'm gonna be giving away a few of them in their show there's the user manual the it's aom is the apparently the manufacturer that makes it so it comes in a pretty nice case um it's the model ts002 made in china um <laughs> that's that's where it was made some stuff i think comes from china that's good doesn't it yeah yeah, the safe answer to that is yes. <laughs> you didn't sound too convincing. Um, a lot of our tools we use are from China. Um, so, so I want uh, we'll talk about a little bit about doing touch ups. Here's here's another scenario. We'll, we'll have people call us uh, three years later on the exterior of a house. House gets um, pounded by sun uh, on that side of it, and they want us to do touch ups on it and. What do you? What's going to be the problem with that, John? Oh, that color isn't the same as when we were there the first time. Yeah. Yeah, and so th that that presents you know a very tough situation, and especially uh, we've just had recently a few customers call me up. The house has been painted five to seven years ago, um, and we didn't paint it, but they're trying to sell it. And they just want us to come back and um, do touch-ups and just make it look presentable um, to sell the house. And um, I mean, how would you go about? Would you? What would you do if somebody asked you to do that? You know, you got to look at it. Um, you know, there may be some very rare instances where you can get away with it, but it's if it's it would have to be shaded. It would have to be a white color, and usually those aren't the sides of the house that need touch-up. Um, yeah. Usually, usually you have to repaint from a corner to corner or a point to point, and that really even depends on how much it's faded and how bad it looks. Because if you do just one side, is it going to make the rest of the house look even worse? And so that's a that's a tricky place to be. <laughs> yeah, it's super Jack Armando. If you were a turtle, how many protein shakes would you put under a lawyer's chair? <laughs> And great light show. And I don't even know oh, what that means. He needs to go back to school. <laughs> He's a little bored. Thanks for the super chat, Armando. Um, so and so, John just brought up a good point with doing touch-ups. And so, on when it when it comes to doing it, the exterior of a house. I, I think even after a year, anything that gets any type of sun, you're gonna see a difference. Um, and the touch up almost becomes just as noticeable as the spot deep being touched up. So John said corner to corner. And and so I'll bring that up when it go and walking into the inside of a house. If there's if there's a wall, a hallway that's extremely you know used, it's got a few nicks and dings. It's got some people that rubbed on the wall. The customer asks us, you know, can we touch that up? As professional painters, I know. I mean, we can bust out a pan and a roller and roll that wall. It won't take long. Just as fast as we can set up to do touch ups. And so, with a lot of our customers, we um, I give them bids to do touch ups and. And I tell them we'll touch it up, but we what we do is we just go from corner to corner. If it's the same wall, I mean we don't have to worry about getting all the way to the edge. We're just gonna we're not gonna mask off the edges. We're just gonna re-roll the whole wall corner to corner. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a matter we'll use a little bit more paint, but we're gonna be way faster. And then you're definitely not gonna see any touch-ups. And there's a lot of cases where that's how we perform our touch-ups on the exterior of a house. More, more than likely, it's just going to be easier just to spray it from corner to corner and, and deal with it that way. Um, but if on the exterior house, if it's over a year old, I, I usually steer, try to steer the customer away from doing those type of touch-ups. So uh, I know, you know, both John and I on a hallway, we could roll that hallway in 15 minutes and um, it, pretty fast. 
Yeah, and you know, it all comes down to the amount of time it's going to take to to get the look that the customer wants, and and really, it just sometimes it's best just to cut bait and say let's re-roll that whole wall. You have any questions you've seen, Lisa, on um, the I feed? Am, I am. I am working. I'll say, let's see, My Angels Painting Lopez. Thank you. Um, you are the best. I learn a lot with your videos and live shows. Thank you, My Angels, for being on. Jenny Tootin's on, I see. Um, Aaron Wilmot. Wow, Instagram and YouTube at the same time. Yeah, he's... What about overspray drips? Overspray or drips from your roller on the trim when you repaint corner to corner without tight cut-ins? You can answer that. So, I, um, so overspray drips on on your roller on the trim so that i mean to me like if somebody's oh, rolling the paint yeah. and they drip some paint on the trim Got it. um if the trim is dried and cured if you do it that same day or if you do it even the next day within 24 hours um your wall paint is um is not nearly as hard and durable and doesn't bond nearly as well as um, your trim paint and usually just with warm water and not even soap that's just going to wash right off if you catch it that same day you just you it usually will wash. that would be the my first um attempt to resolving that is warm water the next attempt would be warm soapy water mm -hmm. and then um if if it wouldn't come off then what would you do you know, if water and warm soapy water aren't going to work, um, my go-to after that is a little Simple Green or Durtex, which is a, uh, a, um, a window cleaner with a little bit of ammonia in it, but that's always a little dangerous when you start using the chemicals because you don't want to soften up the, the enamel that's on the, the trim. Um, you know, the very last thing I'm going to do is try to go through and touch up the trim, unless we're the ones that painted it and I have the paint and it's, it's right there in front of me. Yeah. I noticed we got some people, their messages are being deleted and put in timeout. So. We got to figure some things out because I don't know how I accidentally, I don't know how. We, gotta, we still what? have some glitches in our little What do you got to figure out? I don't know because I think, I don't know. Well, I noticed um, hopefully Pete Plaza goes away because he keeps saying inappropriate comments on the channel. I see. Oh, I, I seen it. it looks like Armando deleted some of his messages and put him in timeout, which is good. I tried to put him in timeout. If you're going to get on the live show and just be inappropriate and say inappropriate things, hopefully we're going to catch you fast yeah. enough and eliminate you from the show. So, um, How about um, self-promoting? Paint, paint well. Yeah, this I know this has been um, a thing we've had, you know, here recently on switch on my, my Instagram and my live show. People are getting on getting on and using it as a means to self promote themselves. And, um, you know, I think it's kind of getting a, a little bit out of hand. Um, and so, I mean, the, the live show is just a way for us to um, get on here and, you know, teach other people our methods and how we go about, you know, painting and doing things. And um, I'm seeing people that are not even painters. Even I, I just put somebody in timeout that was trying to promote another channel about cats or dogs or something like that. And it's just not, I mean, this isn't the, the place to, you know, self-promote yourself. But um, we want to a community yeah. that I mean, we when you talk just turn around and talk so you okay. look at the camera we want to build a community where we encourage and help and support but that it's this is not the platform for um yeah. promoting your own channel yeah but we want that. I mean, we definitely want it. We definitely, I mean, the whole, the whole purpose of this is that our, my channel is to support other painters, um, help them learn what we're doing and um, want to see their businesses grow and stuff like that. But some people are just um, going to getting a little overboard on it and stuff. So a good question from Paint Tech Academy for you. What's the question? How do you touch up ceilings? <laughs> um, that's a good question. Um, touching up ceilings is, is um, Probably one of the most difficult Super things. Super difficult. Yeah. One of the most difficult things to touch up is a ceiling, and and why is that? And what happens is, is ceilings, the light coming in from a room, and this is so critical. If a room doesn't have any natural light coming into it at all, you're probably not going to have a pr problem. But wherever that natural light is coming in, you walk in the door, and the natural light you know runs along the ceiling, 
and it just makes it, and the same with the hallways, natural light running down hallways and stuff, it makes it extremely difficult. But what, one of the things that we've, um, and I saw a super chat too that I'll get yeah. to recognize here pr pretty quick, but one of the things that makes, um, has made our life a lot easier when it comes to touching up ceilings is using uh, a product, and um, I'll you know promote this product because it, it's great, from Sure Williams, it's um, Eminence from Sure Williams, and it's flat, it's a flat ceiling paint. It's designed just for ceilings, and um, because it's flat, it makes it easier to touch up. It's we we spray we spray them a lot, we roll them a lot. They both it looks excellent, and it makes touch up so much easier. But if you sprayed um, uh, if you sprayed a ceiling with satin paint, and then you went back and touched it up with a roller. I mean, you're gonna see it, man. And I mean, spraying ceilings is one of the most difficult things to spray as a painter of anything, for trim and everything, because what happens, you, you walk in, you see your lap marks, you see you know, um, just all kinds of shadow, just weird things. And um, doing touch-ups on a ceiling, if you roll the ceiling, because what happens, and um, I'll explain some of the things that causes the problem. I think, you got a, something to say? Well, we're about out of time, so I think it's good to wrap this up. But we have one more winner, correct? Yep, I got to. And you have a super chat. Yeah, and I got. I got to answer. Yeah, I got to answer this uh, ceilings. Um, the heat causes the paint to dry really fast, and so when you're rolling a ceiling, trying to keep a wet edge is extremely difficult, and so that causes part of the problems with doing touch-ups. And, and one of the methods I I do, and I did a touch-up on a ceiling just recently, and I I'll take and I'll use a brush, and um, that was interesting. What just happened with Instagram? Um, but I'll, I'll brush it and I'll start off where the touch up is and then I'll, and I'll brush that touch up it and I use just a tiny bit of paint and then I start to what I call dry feather it out and I start to just feather it with a brush and I'll daub it with a brush and start doing this feathering technique and that's one of the things that's worked best for me it's um it is doing and it's it's it, you have to have a dry brush with not a lot of paint on it. And another thing is I'll do is if it's a small touch up, I'll just use the end of the bristles and I'll daub it and just and, and hit it with just like the end of the bristles like this and just daub it around and then just begin working my way around the surface and just daub it away. And that's kind of another technique that I've used. And I don't know if you've tried that technique before, but it's worked for me. Yeah, yeah, it works. It's all about where's the light coming in on the room. And so if you're dry feathering it out, you want to try to dry feather towards where the light's coming in, and that's going to help you out a lot too. But ceilings are definitely a pain. Um, yeah, I think I've touched up just about um, everything that we've got. You got anything to add to, you know, anything to that? Any more touch-up tips and you know, stuff? It's just patience. It's just like anything else in painting. You get better the more you do it, and unfortunately, it's not usually the thing we want to do because yeah. they're, they're a big pain. But um, yeah. yeah, Kevin Steverson, um, are colored ceilings different than white? The more color to the ceiling, the more difficult it is to touch up. Um, when we use the eminence, we like um, pure white. I like pure white ceilings better than anything, which makes it easier to touch up. I always uh, you know, steer my customers to pure white um let's see uh let's see need a video on daubing for touch-ups yeah so i'm just to um add to i'm gonna be doing a video on you know some of these tech techniques we've talked about and showing how they're actually done in the field so stay tuned for that you can um, find those videos on our YouTube channel. Um, don't forget, you follow us on Instagram um, for a lot of cool video tips and stuff. Instagram, Idaho Painters, and my Facebook page. Um, Facebook, we're uh, really big on Facebook, putting a lot of stuff on Facebook and Instagram. We got another uh, thing to give away, our, um, the stud finder, mm -hmm. the stud finder, multi-function finder. Um, what are it's some more announcements? We always announce Sean. a few things. Wow, you're like a little, there, you? Sean oh, F. Just, Sean F. Just let it. Oh, I see him right there. Ceilings. Sean F. You're the winner of the. There you go. The AOM stud finder. So kind of cool. Um, there you go. We'll be sending that out to you. Thanks for being on the show, Sean. Thank you. Um, and congratulations for winning that uh, multimedia finder. We always do like certain announcements and stuff. We so um, somebody was asking. Or we had a couple people ask about your hats that they want to buy your hats. Right. So, do you have any? So I, I just ordered um, fifty of the hats that will, I'll, I'll be selling myself. Um, that will we'll be able to ship out here. They're on order. I'm not going to get them for I think an, another three weeks or so. We do sell our 
Paint Life shirts right there. Um, you can find the Paint Life shirts. Go to my uh, website, theidahopainter.com. We sell them at our shirt and hat store there. I do give away autographed ones um, every now and then on live show and give out shirts on Instagram. I've been giving out people that tag us. If you if you've, if you've got Instagram, tag me in your photos. I'd love to see your photos because we re-tag them. I just had a, a photo. I uh, re-tagged it. It's got over 600 likes now, which is kind of really cool. So tag me. You got to, in the photo, tag me. Um, I really think it's cool when you guys share that stuff. And um, if we give you, send you any products, you know, send, uh, when you get it, take a picture. I had one guy uh, receive the t-shirt, took a picture. I put the photo on Instagram. Love. That was really cool. Love I seeing that stuff. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. So I got a tool store theidahopainter.com go to my tool store all the tools that um you can find on amazon that we use and endorse some of them you can only find on amazon like our cardboard shield holder i buy it myself from my own tool store you can go to my tool store just a simple way the shirts and hats a simple way you can help support the idaho painter um and so um yeah it's really cool Okay, so if people wanted to know, can they pre-order hats, or how would that work? You know, or just as soon as they get out, we'll let them know. Um, I guess if they wanted to pre-pre-order them, we could start. We could start taking pre-orders. Just of take them names. Stuff. Yeah, we could start. Get, if you guys want you any of um our my paint life hats and stuff, they're pretty cool hats. They're um. I don't. I should. I don't want you to see my head without my hat on. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, they're really cool hats. The white stitching and stuff. They're um, they're not your trucker style. They're really cool hats. Love them. Um, we wear them when we work and stuff too. So yeah, really cool. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, oh, we got thanks for John being here. John's the Idaho Painter staff crew, and he's part of the you know educational crew here, teaching people, um, answering questions and stuff. He's um, out in the field painting and teaching our crew more than I am now so he's he's the guy so if you have any questions always you can fire him off to john but apparently like, not about roping because i haven't covered that sufficiently yet <laughs> <laughs> we never taught our guys about rope i can't remember what the other one was roping and something else but um oh th th we got some super chatters jeremy owens thank you very much jeremy i need to see a double backflip next time you're on the water um, oh, no. I'm still working on my no. single. No. <laughs> you got to stop encouraging no. him to do that yeah. stuff. Because no. he um, comes back, he hurts. That's not I'll, I'll try. Aaron Wilmot, thank you for the, the um, super chat. Armando, thank you for the super chat. Family Man, thank you for the super chat. All your um, tags on Instagram, they're really cool. Yeah. Thank you very oh, much. Wow. Thank you very short. Thank you, Peter Janica. Janica, I don't know if he ever did say where he is from. but Yes, he's, he did. He's in... Um, Somewhere, it's Tennessee. So Tennessee the, um, Nashville? 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 Knoxville? Some, yeah, mm -hmm. somewhere over there. So he's actually Sarge. local. Yeah. Kind of cool. But originally from the Czech Republic. Yes. Yep. Um, somebody asked how much of the hats going to be. They're going to be $20 for the hats. So, oh, good price. yeah. So what's the tag? What's the tag for Instagram? So if you're on Instagram and you, you put a, a, a photo on Instagram, you upload a photo. It's on your own Instagram. If you tag that photo, you use that little option that actually tags it and it'll put the person's name in there. When you tag it, it's actually put onto my own Instagram on um, not the ones there, there. You have to look at the top. I can look at what I've put on Instagram and what other people have tagged me on Instagram. And there's a whole list of photos. And it's really cool it puts it on my own instagram when you tag it that's a little bit different than a hashtag if you hashtag it, it um the hashtag I, I get notified that you've hashtagged me or people when they search the hashtag that they can find me and stuff like that but it's important that you tag me so um and the people that send me really cool tagged um, pictures I've been giving them um, a shirt and if you ever win one of my shirts if you want it you know, sign we I, I sign them and send them out signed or if, um, if you ask for it I to be signed because maybe they'll want me to sign them or John to sign them just like I got a, <laughs> I got a DFW crown one back there that yeah. um, Richard signed um, his autograph on way for over. Me, so it's cool so we're way yeah, over we anyways Bye. hopefully we've helped you out hopefully John and I given you some tips and tricks doing paint touch-ups um, and 
you know, if you got any more questions, um, you can fire them off on um, my YouTube channel. Uh, we do have um, email support. That's another thing. Email support on my, go to my website, theaddiopainter.com. I got paid email support and paid phone support. And then also you can actually purchase a copy of my 20 page bid packet. That is um, an incredible bid packet. You can see how we win so many dang bids. Um, so thank you for everybody that showed up to the live show. It looks like tonight our concurrent viewers was higher than we've ever had it. Yeah. Playbacks were higher. The average duration was as high as I've seen it. So really cool. So job, thank you very guys. much. Yep. It's all because you, everybody that showed up here, that shared um, and, and been part of the show. So we thank you very much. We're going to be signing off here, you know, and um, coming back next week for um, our live show next Monday at 7 p.m. See ya out. Out. Is it going out? I don't know. It always seems like it kicks yeah. off after a couple seconds. Now it's out. Maybe.